All right, guys, to make this Valentine's Day wreath, I'm going to go through some of the supplies that I'm using. You may choose to change this up some. Again, this is just to inspire you to hopefully make some sort of Valentine's wreath over the next couple weeks or so. First main thing is to get yourself a wreath ring. These came, this came from the Dollar Tree. It is 14 inches wide. It's one that I've used before in other videos. They do carry some smaller ones at other locations, like 12 inches, 10 inches. So you can even do a smaller version of this wreath if you want to just change out the size of that. But again, that will change out how much you need of all the other stuff. But again, get yourself a wreath ring to attach the cord that we're going to make on it. Obviously, the next step is yarn. So let me just come over here. I saw, sorry for my shadows. I will be using red yarn for the pom-poms I'm planning on making white yarn to be the cord that's going to go wrapping around the wreath ring and I'm debating on my pink right now so when you see the final product you'll know whether or not I use this but I'm thinking about doing pom-poms in both the red and the pink so I have just want to mention this now because I'm just trying to go through all the supplies you need first but again you could change it out and I may decide yes or no into whether or not I'm using this color but I thought it was really pretty it's actually this one is called uh, I believe it's called perfect pink this is called Perfect Pink. I got this on Amazon. It's a jumbo size um, Red Heart Super Saver. This and this was also the Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. This one was, I believe, like a cherry red. And this one was like an off-white Aran, A-R-A-N, I believe, of a color white. And again, these came in all this same size here, which is 14 ounces or roughly... 396 grams and it could has about 744 yards of yarn in one side of these skeins again I got these on Amazon and I think I was able to pay just over six dollars a piece for them but the price does go up and down so you may be able to find them at Walmart Michaels Hobby Lobby cheaper or around the same price so again pick out your yarn colors decide if you're gonna do pink red and white like I am or you can change it up the next thing you're gonna need is you're going to need beads. Let me just move this out. Okay, you need to need an assortment of beads. Uh, these beads in the container, got something attached there. These beads in this container came from Amazon. They were supposed to be, I was under the impression I would get all hearts. I end up getting, because it was a 50 pack, I end up getting some of these circle ones, which I thought would be really cool to kind of use alongside the heart ones that you see here. And then I also picked up these from Walmart when I went shopping. Um, so they were in store. I'm sure you can find something like this on Amazon or any other craft store. But I got these because they had some pink ones in there and I wanted to be able to kind of incorporate the pink yarn that I might be able to use by having at least a couple pink hearts in the project as well. So you're going to want an assortment of beads. The next step is how we're going to attach the beads. We're actually going to be attaching them, as you will see later, with pipe cleaners. So get yourself a bunch of pipe cleaners. You can choose whether you want them all to be red or you can do like I did and you can get an assortment. So like I will probably, if I'm attaching the pink ones, I'll grab them out here and grab the pink ones. So whatever color beads you're doing, try to find pipe cleaners in that color. And again, these came from Amazon. They were, these were a hundred set. And I believe these were a hundred set as well. A hundred of the red ones and a hundred of the mixed ones. I'm not gonna be using all these obviously in this project. So again, get yourself some pipe cleaners because we will be using that to attach the next thing you want to get is some letters to paint. Again, this came from Amazon. I don't have a lot of crafting stores in my area. Basically for crafts, I think you have to go to Walmart. I don't even live near a Joann's really anymore. That's not more than like 45 minutes away. So I found these on Amazon as well. And what I like is you get five of each letter in there. And I believe these are like, oh, I can't remember the height. I think they're one to two inches high. Let me see. Yeah, they're almost like... Yeah, almost two inches high leather letters, sorry. And they come with this tray. Again, this was on Amazon. I'll try if I can remember to put the links to everything, you know, on Amazon that I got down below just so that you can see for yourself. And then I also picked up the red paint. This is um, Appleberry's Real Red Gloss Acrylic, Acrylic Paint. I didn't know whether I wanted to use a matte or a gloss, but I really thought the gloss would be better this time. This came from Amazon as well. It was around three... 77 but I know you can get this at Walmart as well or any other craft store. The next thing you're going to want is a pom-pom maker. This pom-pom maker is uh, not, yeah, it's the smallest in the set that I've showed before and this one makes, I believe I measured it was about an inch, inch and a half size pom-pom. So you're going to want a tool that will allow you to make that. Again, this is one that I've shared before and I will show you how to make them obviously, but this is the Clover 
pom-pom from the pack I usually show you guys with. And then you're also going to want your spool loom to be able to do your cord that you're going to use to wrap around the wreath. So again, grab yourself one of these. If you don't have that, you can modify it by trying to make a cord just using so many pegs on a different loom. Just keep in mind the amount of cord you need will change up depending on the way you are making your cord. So when I give you the measurements for this, it's going in track with this, not if you're using a different method, so keep that in mind. So again, that's kind of all the supplies I believe you're gonna to need to make this project. So again, like I said, I will have links down below and don't forget your normal scissors, your crochet tools, things like that that are automatic, but I wanted to show you the things that were not. And again, these are all the supplies you should have on hand when you're getting ready to make it, along with the normal, again, scissors, crochet hook, looming tool, all that. And I will show you each how to do each part. We're gonna be doing the white cord first, then we're gonna be making a bunch of pom-poms, which I actually already started making, so I'm just gonna, your best bet is also get a container to store your pom-poms in. Right now I'm making a bunch of red, but again, when this video is all done, you'll see whether or not I actually use the pink. I really am leaning towards making some pink ones. And this is just, again, I'm just making a bunch of them, and I'll show you how to make them and how to leave the tail. But get yourself a couple containers. That'll be good to help store your pom-poms because you're going to need some time to make these up. And this is what's good. With this project, you can kind of take a night, make up your pom-poms, maybe two nights to make up all the pom-poms you need. And the same way the cord might take an evening. So these are something, this is a project you can do in steps over a couple days. So again, this is all the supplies you need, and then we'll go into making the cord, and then we will go into how to make the pom-poms, and then the rest of it will kind of come together after that. So we're going to do the cord first, the pom-pom then, and then we will be painting our letters when they dry. Then we'll assemble this all together to be our really cute Valentine's Day wreath. Okay, guys, let's move on to the next step. I know I mentioned we're going to use a hot glue gun to attach the wooden letters to the yarn, but if it doesn't work out, I decided I wanted to make sure I had a second option, which is this tacky glue that I've used on products before. Let me see if I can zoom in here. I think it's like Aline's. I'll make sure I write it right here, what this glue is called up close since I know it's hard to see that. But it's this tacky original glue. I've gotten it before to use on different craft projects. So again, if the hot glue doesn't work, we'll be using this instead. Okay guys, we need to make the cord to wrap around the wreath, and I'm just again using that yarn I showed in the beginning, and this part of my spool loom, I'm going to do a drawstring cast on, which means I'm going to make my slip knot. And I'm going to drop it down in between here. Again, it's however much of a tail you want, I'm actually going to give it a little more tail. So I'm going to redo my slip knot. I'm going to do probably maybe about 12 inches just because we can tie this to the wreath when we're putting it on and we can always trim it. It's always better to have too much of a tail to work with when you're trying to do a project than not enough because you can always hide it later. Okay, so we're going to drop that down in between, or in between the, in the spool, okay, attach it to one of the pegs. Give it a little snug. Now remember to do the drawstring, we go, we kind of go back and forth. So some of these pegs are not going to be, so we go behind this one. Get a little tighter on there. There we go. So we're going to go behind this one, in front of this one, behind this one, in front of this one, until we get back to our starting one. And then when you're here, you're going to lay it on top of all the pegs. And wherever there are two, zoom in here a little bit. So like I said, it's looking like this. Wherever there are two on there, we're going to knit over. So we're going to go to the next, and again, there's none on here because we're laying it in front, but we have another spot here where we'll have two, so we're going to knit it over. Again, lay it in front, nothing here to knit over, and we go to our last peg here, and we knit it over. That's the drawstring cast on. Then as we work the project, it will close together on the inside. So now what you can do is you can go right around and you can do your normal just plain e-wrap knit. So I'm going to go all the way back till I knit the first one. And then what I usually do is I lock the last one in place. And then I go around and I just go right around and knit it over. And then I gently pull on the tail. I'll gently pull on that, but you're going to keep working your way around until you get the cord the length that you want. Excuse me, it's a little slippery in my hand today. Again, I'm just e-wrapping it around. 
until I get back to my starting point. And then I usually choose, okay, and then I usually choose to knit over the last one. And then I go around and knit them all over. And pushing them down as I go. Okay, so that's all you're gonna do is work your way around. Now, for this wreath, you're gonna need a lot of cords. So what I'm gonna do is right here on the screen, I will tell you how long the cords are, or cords that you need to use to wrap around the wreath. So once you get both those done, go ahead and we can move on to the next part. I will also come back to show you how to bind this off when your cord is done. Once you're ready to take the cord off the loom, we're just going to keep it very simple because it doesn't really matter exactly how this is taken off because we're going to be tying it to the wreath. But all I did, <clears throat> excuse me, all I'm going to do is this is our starting peg, is I just kind of went around and I pulled one loop off of a peg and I put it back on our starting peg and then I knitted it over. Okay, then I went and grabbed another one on this side, put it on that first peg, knitted it over. Grabbed one from over here, moved it over, knitted it over, and the same with the last one that's on there. Bring it over, knit it over. Then I cut myself a tail again, leaving a decent amount of tail so I can use it for when I attach it to the wreath. And then all I did was I just brought this tail through that last loop to bind it off. So I just brought that little tail out through, remove it from the spool loom, give it a little tug. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be wrapped okay, around again, the wreath. I measure again, the cord just to give you an idea of how I'm measuring it because I realize that some people may think they have to hold the cord tighter. All I did when I was measuring, measuring it is I had a flexible tape measure and I went on one side and I gently held it and went down through. I didn't pull it tight. I let it just kind of be in its natural state of when it's off the loom and I just gently worked my way down through until I saw how, how much cord I had. Again, don't pull it tight when you're measuring it. Just let it kind of be as it is and that'll give you a better idea. So I just want to kind of quickly come in here and say this so that you wouldn't be pulling it really far in order to be able to measure it. Sorry, you just heard something fall on the floor. <laughs> to make the pom-poms again, I'm using the smallest of the clover pom-poms that I have, pom-pom makers. So you want anything that can give you roughly about an inch to an inch and a half pom-pom. So don't stress out if you don't have this particular brand. You're basically looking for about an inch, inch and a half. And if it's not quite the same size, it's okay. But these are gonna be, as you could tell, around the wreath ring. So you will be able to adjust how many you need according to like the size that you get. I just say go for the smaller pom-pom. Don't make a big one, make littler ones. And I'm gonna use my cherry red yarn and I'm gonna show you how to make them and again, at the end, you'll need roughly this many pom-poms, and it's up to you whether you want to have them some pink, some just red. This is a total amount of pom-poms you're going to need, and it's up to you how you want to divide it between using one color or if you want to use two colors. Or even if you want to use a third, you may choose to add white and do red, white, and pink around yours. So again, the grand total of roughly how many I used to go around that wreath ring was this, and it's up to you kind of how you want to divide that up. Okay, so let's show you how to quickly make one. Again, this is coming off of a skein that is um, originally the size of that pink yarn I showed you at the beginning. I did two or three yarn cakes of it, and I've already done a bunch, as you saw in that container at the beginning. I haven't done my tally of how many I've had, but I'm basically just making a bunch of each. And then, I'll, you know, then as you can see, I told you how many I actually end up using. But if you end up making too many pom poms, you can always use them for another product, so don't get too stressed out. But again, when you're using the clover pom-pom maker, let's see if I can zoom in here a little better for you. Okay, so we got two parts here and we got two parts there. So you want to take the yarn and I'm kind of holding it in the back as I wrap it around the pink part of this. So I'm just wrapping it around these two. So there's two there, I'm wrapping around the whole part, right around it. Kind of keeping it out. It's a little easier when you're, you're doing it because you're gonna hold it different than I am on camera. But again, I'm wrapping it until I get to the end. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of gently pushing this back to get out, make sure I get enough of the yarn in there. I'm going around and around. Then I always do a couple extra right on the end 
and now you go in between the two when you come around come in between the two and you're going to close that part and open this part and you're going to go right down in between those and you're going to do the same thing on this side and wrap it so see it kind of works through that's how it looks underneath you're doing the same process and you make sure you give yourself some slack here and you're just wrapping that spot right there and again it's wrapping around the whole thing And then once you get it wrapped good, you're going to put it through those two like you did, close it up, and then cut it. And it's okay, these are longer, you can get rid of those later. Then you're going to take your scissors, and this is really good to do with small scissors, and just be careful, and you're going to go right in between these two parts here, and cut right in between. See how we got this like part right in there? We're going to go right in between there, and cut it, and go right around this. So you're going to flip it over and do the other side. You're going to just cut through there. Okay. All right. And if you notice that when you're looking at, well, this one's too long, you can gently pull the one that's too long out. And now you cut yourself a piece of yarn, probably like anywhere from five to six inches. And you're going to take this and you're going to lay it in between this spot right there. You're going to lay it right in between there. Okay. We're laying it right in between. And pushing it through and I always give it a little tug so we're pulling it through and then we're just going to tie it and I always double tie it so I tie it tight as tight as you can without breaking your yarn just do it really snug as you saw and then I go ahead and I give it another little knot in there okay now when you got that done go ahead lift up this lift up that side and then pop it apart and then I usually obviously put it back together for the next one. And then I just kind of hold the two long strings and I fluff it a little bit. And then that lets me see, okay, which ones are too long. And then you can go ahead and you can trim which ones don't really match. But that's how you make a pom-pom. So again, go ahead and make a bunch with off the number I told you at the beginning of this part of how many pom-poms I used. Go ahead and make a bunch and decide what colors you want to do. And then we'll move on to the next part of making this process, uh, this, this wreath. Hey guys, it's time to paint our saying with the Be Mine. I'm not going to show paint each and every one of these. I'm just going to do the first one to show you. But again, I'm using a high, uh, excuse me, a gloss of real red. This is Apple Barrel. I got this, um, I got it on Amazon, but I think Walmart carries this brand as well. So, or any other craft store probably does as, as well. I will not obviously need the eight fluid ounces of this. I'm barely going to probably use any of it to do all these letters but just wanted to say so you can find smaller containers of the red excuse me the real red paint and it would probably work just as fine you don't need as big a size of this to do it and then what we got to do is I'm just using a normal paintbrush I wanted one that like if I went like this it covers a pretty big spot to make it go quicker and if you want you can option to have gloves on I didn't know if I wanted to wear gloves because I tend to always get paint all over me but I just wanted to show an option would be to wear gloves. And I had this little tray thing. I think I got this little tray at like the Dollar Tree or something. It might have even been like a six pack or something in the art supply. Or you can use any other little thing to just hold some paint in. I mean, it's got leftover stuff from before. But okay, so all we're going to do, put a little paint in one of the side. And then we're just going to go ahead and paint. Now I'm thinking what I might do is I might paint the edge first, let that dry, and then do the front, or kind of work my way around. So I'm going to go around the edge first, letting it kind of touch some of the other part, but I want the edge done, and I'm just kind of doing this side. But really it's going to be however you want to paint it, and make sure you give them plenty of time to dry. So this would be something you could do, and I'm doing the front too, I guess I'm doing both sides, just working what I can where I'm not holding. But I want to do the edge first, so I kind of went around to the edge a little bit minus where I'm actually holding it. And again, I'm just painting where I can see. And you'll decide whether you want one or two coats, but I think this is gonna be pretty okay with one coat. And I would just say, like again, just kind of do where your hand's not, not it and let it dry. So I'm gonna like set this one down, let that dry, and then I'll go back in and do the other part when I can hold the other side. So again, that's all you gotta do. Keep going ahead and just painting all the letters. Like I said, I kind of start with the edge a little bit, kind of outlining it. 
make sure with your E's. Like I said, these came from Amazon. I'll try to have the link down to the letters I bought below. But I believe, again, Walmart and that carries uh, similar ones. And these, I believe, were only about an inch and a half if you compare it to my thumb. They're not hugely big. Um, but again, you can find other ones. Some letters can be a little curvy if you want to have a little more style. But again, just go ahead and paint your whole Be Mine. Let that dry. Don't worry about the back because you're going to be um, using hot glue to glue it onto the yarn. So go ahead and get your lettering done and I will see you for the next step. Now what I did is I already wrapped the longer cord that I made, the 440 inches one. Again, all total I had 517 inches that I had to, that I needed to go around this wreath. And what I did is I actually pulled it tighter when I was wrapping it. And I'll show you with this last little section I had to do. But the first thing I gotta do is I just clipped them there to make sure kind of where I wanted it. So now I need to actually take this and tie it to the wreath ring on both sections before I attach the last little bit. So all I'm going to do is kind of turn this over because I want to make sure it's tied on the back of the project. And I'm just going to kind of like tie it to the thing. I'm going to wrap that one around. Oops, I'm going to wrap it on the middle one that's kind of behind everything that will hide when we do it. And then just kind of bring it up. And then I'm just creating a loop just to attach it to my wreath ring. And if you want to, you can just kind of put another little knot in it. So just attach it to the wreath ring with that starting thread that we are uh, starting thread that we have so it's gonna be attached and then I won't need to use this clip anymore I said let me do it over here because I don't know if you actually saw that because I might have been out of the screen let me see make sure I'm out okay so here I've got this cord what I want to do is I want to bring the cord to one of the inner rings that it's not going to show on and what I did just kind of get in here is I kind of created a loop that I could kind of use to tie it to the the excuse me the part of the ring uh, wreath ring that I wanted on, and then I just added an extra little slip knot to keep it from falling off. But it's attached to that middle, one. and then I can trim and hide this part in later. So when I hold it the right way, which is the right way to me, is when it lays the flattest. If you look kind of excuse me, if I can do this right. There's kind of an angle. The underside is a little more curved, but I want my stuff to lay on the flat side. So that's why it's important of how you wrap it. Now I'm going to wrap this last little piece. I'm going to bring you guys up a little higher so that you're, you can see more of what I'm doing. Okay. Make sure. So, okay. This is the part I'm going to wrap now. And I want to make sure I cover up the spot of where I wrapped the old ones to. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the new cord and we're going to tie it to the wreath ring where we had did the other one. So I'm going to turn it back over and I'm just going to tie it onto one of the inside, excuse me, inside ones like I did before. Kind of go as close to it as you can and tie it. Again, if you can make all one long cord, that would be great. Then you won't have to worry about hiding anything. And if you want, if you do have two, you can take the one that was there before and the new string and tie them right together. If you don't have that, that's okay. And then just we can hide this in later. And then we're going to take and return it back over so we're on the flat side. Okay. And what I do is I pull it kind of tight. See, like I don't leave it loose. You can decide to leave it loose. It's really going to be however tight you want to do it. But again, if you're going to keep it looser, you may or may not need more cord. That's why it's kind of good if you do work in sections of making the cord because then you can add and remove as you need to. So now when we want to wrap it, we're just going to kind of hold it snug across. Okay. And then we're just going to wrap from behind, bring it back over. And little pieces of cord are going to be easier than the long one. It took me forever to wrap this side because of how long the cord was. But again, it's going to be up to you what you want to do. You can decide to do smaller cords. And then just kind of make sure that we're keeping it together, that we're not getting too many gaps in here. And again, we're just holding it tight and wrapping it around. And continue this till we get all the way over to our start here and then tie the two together. So go ahead and do that. Continue wrapping. When you get to where your other one started or where you need to end, go ahead and tie it on like we did there and your cord will be all attached. This is the part of the design process that can be a little frustrating. It's trying to decide where you want everything. Of course, at the beginning of the video, you saw kind of how it was 
But again, this is kind of showing you that it's okay to play around with it. Do you like the alternating of the two colors of the pom-poms, or would you rather have all pink or all red, or no pom-poms at all? Do you like it saying, be mine? Would you want it to say, kiss me, or something different, or actually spell out Valentine's Day? Do you like just the heart buttons? Do you want to add the circle buttons? That's what's kind of fun. When you get to the stage where this is already wrapped in the yarn, take the time to really think of how you want to do it. Don't automatically do it whatever way you see me do it. Really kind of play around with it before you attach things to get a feel of how you want it to be. So I'm going to show you how to attach the pom-poms next, and then we're going to decide on how I'm going to attach the buttons. i got two different options. I can use pipe cleaners, which will give a little fuzziness in between the holes, which might be nice, or I might hot glue them down. I am probably leaning more towards the pipe cleaners, but we'll see. That's what's fun about the design process. I want to get the pom-poms on first, I want to get the buttons on first, leaving the space to write the be mine. I'm just deciding whether I want to glue that on last or if that's going to be glued on before the buttons. So basically I'll kind of share that process with you, but I wanted to jump on here real quick in between the two processes so, that, so that you can see that there's a lot you can play around with. You can decide to remove the heart buttons, you can add in like the circle buttons I have over there that I was originally thinking about adding that I'm not sure if I want on there. So that's what I love about this part. So let's go ahead and show you how to attach the pom-poms to your wreath. I cleared all the things off and I'm just going to show you how to attach a pom-pom and then you'll be able to go around and do it yourself for all the other ones. So when you see this after I attach one, you're pretty much going to be able to continue that process and the next time you see this, it probably will have all the pom-poms around it before we do the next step. Okay, so with the pom-poms, keep in mind that you have the tails of the pom-poms and you're basically just going to want to work them along the edge. So if we're looking at this, we kind of kind of pick a spot in the edge and you can gently separate the two spots because of the way we do the cord. Bring your crochet hook up to grab one of the strings and bring it down through. Oops, I got it messed up here. Let me try that again. Okay, so come up either in between the way you wrapped it or even in the cord itself, however you're choosing to do it. Put it around the crochet hook and wiggle that one part through. Okay, and then you're just going to go ahead, flip it over, and tie it. And I usually do a, a double knot. You can leave the stragglers there for right now, just in case you want to place it differently. And like you said, when we get it all done, you can just kind of readjust your yarn. We'll do a second option, we'll show you one more time, is if we take, we get a good pink one, not one that's fuzzy enough. Okay, so it's to take the pink one, and you can trim, I don't have my, oh, there's my scissors. Okay, we just got to trim this one up a little bit. All right, the other option, when you're looking at the next spot you're going to do, is to go, like I said, right through the cord. You want to come as close as you think you want to do, and just either go through the cord, or in between. If it automatically wants to go in between, then you're fine. If you want to go in the cord, you might have to wiggle it a little more. And again, you're doing the same thing. You're grabbing part of the crochet, the yarn with the crochet hook, and you're kind of working it to the other side of the wreath ring, so that you have one cord or one string on one side, one on the other, so that you can again tie it. So line up to where you want it, and tie it on the back, not the front of the wreath. And then bring it back around the front. And if you notice that you're getting too much of a gap, just kind of gently pull your cords back together. And just continue that process all the way around, adjoining the pom-poms on the edge of your wreath. Okay guys, now it's time to attach the buttons in whatever design you choose and to attach the letters. I'm going to be doing them in hot glue for the letters, so I'm actually going to do that last. I've just been debating how I wanted to do this, but I figure since the hot glue is going to need more time to cool and really adhere to the project, it's better if I start with the parts that don't need to be hot glued down. That way that can be hot glued down and then set for a while to just kind of cool down and adhere to the project more. So what I'm using, excuse me, is I'm going to be using pipe cleaners. And what I do is I'm threading them through the holes of the project. So again, I'm just going to show you with this one. They have the nice, if you get buttons that have big enough holes, you can use pipe cleaners. You could probably hot glue all these buttons down if you want, but I'm just going to go through one side, figure out how long of a pipe cleaner I need, depending on the letters, or excuse me, the size of the buttons. 
And I just pull it through, and I just figured, of course it's gonna bite me now. Okay, I just figured it gives it a little extra, just a little bit of fuzz on it. And then I just gotta figure out whereabouts on this project do I want this one to be, and attach it through. So I'm gonna take all these letters off real quick so that I don't mess up where I want it. But again, I kinda want it off center. I'm not putting my words directly at the top across. I want it a little angled. You may again change how you do it. And then I'm gonna take all these buttons off. And again, they may not even make it back on the way that I just had them. It's just an idea. I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow and see what things kind of end up. And I've got a bunch of different types of heartbeats. Some are bigger, some are smaller. So I'm gonna really try to just place some random ones around because I think that would be kind of fun. Keeping an eye on the fact that I want my words to be off center, I'm only gonna be putting buttons on this part. So again, when you have it, you've got your pipe cleaner. You wanna give yourself enough pipe cleaner in the back so that you can pull it through the project. Pick where you want your, your, your heart to be or your button to be, and then kind of gently, it's gonna be a little tricky to show. I'm gonna start this one, I think, because it's a bigger one. I'm gonna put it up here, and I'm just gonna kind of gently, oops, sorry, gently kind of wiggle it through the project till it comes out the other side which is gonna be hard to show on camera, but again, the angles I have to show stuff to you guys is different. So just pick a spot and then kind of gently work your way in until you can feel it come out the other side. That's what I'm looking for on the other side is whereabouts it's gonna come out. Be careful with the pipe cleaners, they will get caught on the yarn. So I found one side. Now I'm just gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing. I'm gonna wiggle it in, gently going between the pieces of yarn so it comes out the other side. Okay, I'm careful not to poke myself. And then once I get it kind of where I want it, as it's worked through, just kind of checking and then turn it over. And I'm gonna kind of twist tie it to the back for right now. The reason I'm doing it temporarily is I wanna get all of them on and I don't wanna hide this yet till I make sure it's where I want it. Because if I don't end up liking it, I can untwist tie it and put it someplace else. But once you get it twist tie, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to work it to hide it in between the yarn. Because you see, we got that gap. We're going to be able to move these in. When you're done, you will hide them in the project more because you don't want someone to get poked by that. So you're just going to bend them and kind of hide them in the project just oops, excuse me, so that you don't see them on the side. When you turn them over, you'll be hiding them in there just enough so that nobody would get hurt. And it's okay if there's a gap. Like if you end up leaving them like that, as long as you don't leave anything poking out, you'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead Excuse me, I messed up my carpet here. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place my hearts on, doing that same method. And again, I will twist tie them, decide that's what I want, and move them around if I need to. And then I will just simply, like I said, tuck them into the project in the back and do that till I get it done. Then when I get it all done, I'm simply going to use my hot glue gun, which I will show you when I get to that step, and put the last final touches on it. Okay guys, instead of using the hot glue gun, I'm actually going to be using this to attach the letters. I've used it on other projects before. I got this, I believe, at the Dollar Tree, but you can also find probably something similar like Walmart or another craft store or even online. I've already attached the B because when I tried doing the hot glue, it just didn't seem to want to stick as well as I thought hot glue would work on it. So I ended up switching to this craft glue and it's been sitting for probably about a good half hour. And as you can see, I can move it and it's not coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and what I like about this is when you take... You don't have to worry about the hotness of a glue gun. And then all you want to do is you're just going to, again, turn over the letters, put the glue on here, and then stick it where you want on there. And I will show you the finished version of the wreath with all the stuff on it. I just wanted to tell you that, again, hot glue is not going to work, and we're going to go ahead and use the tacky glue here. Okay, guys, the wreath is all done. What I really like that I changed up is I actually made sure I found pink pipe cleaners to do the pink hearts attachment with and again we got our letters I just want to kind of pan it for you guys so you can see again the pink and the red is going to show up a little different in person than it is on camera right now but that's all I did is I went around when I attached the pink hearts I tried to find pink pipe, pipe cleaners I had to take them off because originally they had the red pipe cleaners on them but I just like the way that it came out overall and the width of this wreath is about 16 inches once you add the pom-poms to the outside. And again, we use that craft glue. So these letters are on there as of right now. They've been on there for a couple days. They're pretty sturdy, So, but I wouldn't mess around with them too much. Like, don't let your kid play at them. But again, I really like the way this came out. And I'm going to try to get a picture of it hanging up. And all I did to hang it up with is I used a pipe cleaner and I attached it on the back so that it could hang up. But again, I really like the way it came out, and I would love to see how you guys take this idea and kind of run with it and make your own Valentine's Day wreath. 
And again, if you haven't already yet done so, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And make sure you follow the links in the description box if you want to follow me on my social medias. It's important that you follow me on my Simply Intertwine Facebook page. I do not really respond too well to personal messages sent through my personal Facebook page. So again, make sure you're searching up Simply Intertwine on Facebook if you'd like to contact me with any questions you have, and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. But again, this is what it looks like, and I will insert a picture of it hanging on the wall at the very end. But I hope you like it, and have a great day, everyone.